It's great to be here, Gabrielle. Congratulations on your new position. You're going to do a great job. You know, on the way up here, uh, people come and uh, say hello, and then they look at me with this great face displaying concern and say, how's it going? <laughs> and then they wait for the answer, you know? And the answer is, it's bad, all right? Washington is really bad. Uh, you mentioned the Clean Air Act. We've been in the House of Representatives repealing it. And what's really quite tremendous is this legislative trick where, it's not a trick, I mean, it's like this belief that you can legislate away uh, wind directions. So states that are downwind no longer have any ability to complain about what's happening in coal producing plants uh, upwind. Or, <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. Uh, merc <laughs> mercury is, uh, th there was a finding, a controversial finding, that mercury is bad for your health. I know that comes as a shock. Many of you think that we're overreaching with science. Well, I want you to rest assured that that finding has now been removed. So it is not a problem, okay? I don't want you to worry about it. So uh, what's going on in Washington on energy policy is pretty astonishing. Uh, and, and I'm making light of it uh, as a survival mechanism. Uh, but that's the bad news. The good news um, is that we're in Vermont. And I really mean that. Uh, we are in Vermont, and what is, of course, been the central tenet of your organization, uh, your life and energy, is that if you build local energy production through efficiency, through renewables, that builds our local economy. That money is kept in our own communities. I was talking to some folks who were doing the energy committees in Marshfield, uh, the boiler you're telling me about, it went from 40, I guess you went from 4,800 gallons, 4,600 gallons to 2,800 gallons. That's real money that stays in that community. They're going to put in a wood uh, pellet boiler, and energy committees town by town across the state are doing that. Uh, there are, as you know, a lot of folks that are learning how uh, to be installers, uh, how to get into renewable energy. Uh, and every single thing that you do locally allows us to create jobs, keep that money in the local economy. And also, obviously, it has a real impact on changing our energy profile. I mean, Vermont's pretty proud of the fact that we do focus on efficiency. We're the first state that had an energy efficiency utility. We were the first state. This helped a lot, by the way, when I was pushing Homestar, uh, and we got it through the House of Representatives. We were the first state that went low growth negative, and that was before the recession. So at a time when demand was going up, we were through efficiency uh, having demand go down. And we have got to continue with that because it is the concrete example of local economies getting stronger as a result of efficiency and renewables, creating jobs. That is what allows us ultimately to prevail in the battle about an energy policy. Because when we, you get into the, uh, the politics of it, people are going to believe what they're going to believe. They're waving away science. They're acting as though global warming doesn't exist. You can't really persuade a person who, uh, at least a member of Congress, if some are persons, uh, <laughs> you can't persuade them of the science if they don't believe it. But when you can point to job creation in your community, folks that went to work because of an efficiency uh, commitment, uh, communities that have saved money uh, by, uh, through efficiency and through a wood pellet boiler. When you can show that concrete results, that trumps all else. So it's the on the ground work that you are doing day in and day out that you can continue to do. That really is the good news. You can continue to do that. And ultimately, when we turn things around in Washington, then we're going to have policies, we hope, that are going to allow you to better do the job that you were already doing. Because do, we do need incentives. We do need encouragement to start moving in that direction of efficiency and renewables. And public policy really does make a difference in that. So here's the deal that I make with you. If you keep up doing the good work that you're doing, 
day in and day out, community by community, business by business, where Vermont will continue to lead the way, then I will continue to bang my head against the congressional wall <laughs> trying to change our policies and get us back to a place where science does matter, where there's an acknowledgement that if America would have a clean energy policy, it would be good for our economy as well as good for our health and our environment. And this is the energy, this is the, this really is the, uh, uh, the, the challenge of our generation. And what you and I know is that younger people really do get this, even if the politicians are reacting. We've got some kids from Rivendell uh, that came all the way up from uh, the bi-state uh, school district over on the Connecticut River. But young people get this. And you're providing, you and your businesses, you and your local communities are providing the on-the-ground example of why this matters, how it can work, and what the opportunities are if we embrace the challenge. So my goal is to uh, continue to be inspired by the work that you're doing and keep on, the, uh, keep on fighting in Washington. We can turn this around, I do believe that, because it just makes sense. It's too much of an opportunity lost if we don't embrace uh, the things that you're doing and do it on a national scale. So my congratulations to you uh, for the tremendous work that you're doing. Uh, I gotta tell you, I feel very proud uh, in these energy debates in Washington uh, to be the representative of a state of Vermont where I can point to the concrete results of the work that has been done by citizens, by businesses across this state on a sustained basis uh, through thick and thin. So good luck, enjoy your conference, and thank you so much for letting me be part of it.